let's get cooking. Good afternoon and welcome back to my home and to our test kitchen. Right here in Solana Beach, North County, sunny San Diego. I'm your host, Chef Meg, Executive Director of local nonprofit, the Academy of Edible Sciences and Ethnogastronomy, designed to empower both our youth and displaced refugee population through food-based education and community enrichment courses. Feel free to check out our website where we have our additional information on our programming for both our youth test kitchen and STEAM science education courses designed for both teachers and students and our My Grateful Feast refugee training program. For our second episode of this series, we've decided to look into those experimental method steps so that you can follow us through the rest of our journey and the rest of our episodes in seeing our methodology through all of our experimentation. For today's episode, we wanna look at why is the kitchen the best place to experiment? And we came up with a really good myth buster to test this idea. So our experiment today for our second episode is looking at whether or not New York style pizza is the best pizza and unable to be mimicked outside of New York City because their mineral content of their water that they make their dough with cannot be recreated. So how we're going to study this first is having our question, which is how does the mineral content in water impact the dough for pizzas? Our hypothesis for this experiment is that if we increase the mineral content in the water for our samples in our dough, then we will have a stronger, chewier crust for our pizzas. In order for us to go through the steps in our experimental procedure, we need to start with looking at what is our independent variable. And the independent variable in this case is going to be what is it that we're actually changing in our experiment, and that's the water itself for our dough. So I've pulled up different water samples that should all have a different uh, mineral content or what we call total dissolved solids or TDS for each of these different waters that are on the market. Now we're also going to have a fourth sample that is going to be our tap water that we have here in North County, San Diego. So we're gonna make dough with each one of these, our tap water, Evian, Dasani, Aquafina, and then we're actually going to double up on one of these water samples to make five dough. In this case, I've decided to use our tap water here in San Diego. So we'll have five samples of pizza tonight. Two of them will be doubled up on our tap water, and then one pizza made with the Evian water, one with Dasani, and one with Aquafina. We'll try them out and determine, is there a difference with the mineral content? And is one of these pies better than the others? So let's get cooking. So the So the next step in our procedure is to look at what is the actual mineral content in each one of these water samples. In order to do that, we're gonna use a really cool probe that actually works with Bluetooth in your cell phones, with your computers, so that it can actively upload that data in real time. You can save it, record it, use it for later. It even graphs for you. And to test our first water sample, I have it linked to Bluetooth with my phone. And as you can see here with our mode, it's actually testing pH at this moment. So I wanna switch the mode into total dissolved solids or TDS. Okay, that switched over. And then let's look at the graph, um, sorry, the data mode, which it'll pull in data every few seconds. So for our first sample, let's try that out and look at it. And I can switch this mode over so that you can see it's also graphing in real time for us. Let's put it in our distilled water and switch our mode back to total dissolved solids to try out our next sample. Okay, so it's back to zero. Second sample. 
All right, the next step in our procedure, since we just went through each one of our water samples to test our total dissolved solids, is to look at isolating our variables to create the dough. So let's start with our first sample. In order to isolate the variables and make sure that each dough is exactly the same except for our water that we're adding, we need to make sure that our ingredients that we're adding are exactly the same. In order to do this, we're going to weigh each one of our ingredients that we're using for our dough. So let's turn on our scale here. And I'm gonna put my bowl on because first we're gonna measure our flour. So let's zero out the scale. And we need to measure 795 roughly grams of flour. So I'm gonna knead this dough for a few minutes and then we're actually gonna test its temperature because we wanna see it be around the high 70s uh, Fahrenheit range in order for our dough to rise in optimal conditions. We can see our dough starting to bounce back. That's a good sign that we're getting close. Our first sample of dough is ready. We are going to cut each dough into two for our pies. And let each dough ball rise. We'll give it a good amount of time to let those rise and we'll make our pizzas tonight. And we can determine whether or not it is a myth or a fact that we cannot recreate exactly that New York style pizza. And we're back here in the test kitchen to make some pizzas. I brought in with me my dear friend, Alex. Hello, everyone. She's a fellow super yacht chef. We met kind of out on the water, um, I'd say out in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I originally grew up in New Jersey, so I'm here to represent my Italian background and make some pizzas with you. So. Yes. So we allowed our dough to rise. All of our dough samples are good and ready to go. We're both unaware of which dough sample though has each water in it. So we eliminate some of that bias. Um, the only thing next to do is make the pizzas, but we need to make sure that we're making them exactly the same way yep. um, and with the same amount of ingredients. So yeah. let's start with our, with our dough. All right, sounds good. Yeah, back when I, uh, I was doing a charter once and I have a real theory about the water as well. And I use boat water, which is filtered, and didn't realize it. And when my dough came out, it just tasted like baking soda. Uh, yeah. And I was like, what is that taste? It was like acidic. Yeah, that's because on the boats, they, they strip the water of pretty much all of its mineral content. Right. Um, which, which water do you usually use then on the boats? Well, being I'm New York being in my backyard where I grew up, I tried to get the closest thing to New York tap water because mm -hmm. we just have the best pizza there. So I either use Dasani or Aquafina. In my head, you know, those waters uh, come from that area, so I was thinking that would be the closest best thing. You know? I wonder if you'll be able to guess then which pizza is which. Like, oh, this one's with the Evian water. Uh, this one's definitely with the could. Dasani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we'll find out, girl. I don't know. Don't we'll know. See. Maybe you're a super super taste tester. Just a pizza Remember? expert, just oh, okay. by consuming by a default lot of pizza for being time. Italian. Yeah. Okay. I think that's kind of as long as we keep it relatively yeah, the same okay. thickness. Not like perfect circle or anything like that. And then I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go on with my sauce. Mm -hmm. And let's see. We need to make sure that we have the exact same amount. So I think let's. Let's start with one full ladle and see how that looks. And this is from my pizza making days when I was a teenager. 
I worked in multiple pizza shops and restaurants and I miss it. It's almost therapeutic. Absolutely. Making the pizzas. I don't know why I never worked in a pizza Tossing shop. the dough. Yeah. I regret that I never did, honestly. Putting the sauce on. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good amount of sauce. Should we put more or no? no I One think ladle? That's good. I, no, I okay. try not to put too much sauce. Yeah. Just watching them do it, you know, just yeah. make the dough a little wet. And next, I'm going to use our scale. How much cheese do we want to add? The... Scale out? Yeah. Well, because the bowl itself has a weight to it. So right. we want to zero that out and then make sure that uh, we know how much our actual cheese that we're using. So this one's for me. And I did 165, so we'll make sure all of our pies are at 165. Okay, you're good. Mm -hmm. For the taste testing, what we're really looking at is the crust itself. So it doesn't really matter what toppings we're using. Um, but in this case, I decided let's keep it simple. So we've got our normal tomato pizza sauce, some mozzarella cheese, and some pepperoni. So all of our pizzas will be the same. We're eating just pepperoni pizzas today. Nothing wrong with that? No. Okay, so now we're going to the oven. That was a good, perfect size. Fits there. Nice technique. Got it. All right. Yum. We have our first pizza samples ready. Let's bring it over. All right, so we have our pizza number one and our pizza number two that are ready for us to taste test. So I'm gonna pull it off the stone here. And same for you as well, Alex. Unfortunately, I don't have a pizza cutter, so we're <laughs> using a knife today. It's all good. Gets in the belly the same way. So for our pizza tasting, we have four main qualities that we're looking at. The first is dough toughness. So we have on a scale from one to 10, tender being the low end and on the higher end, chewy or harder, more dense. We'll look at dough crispness. So on the low end there is gonna be more of a crackle and on the high end is gonna be more soft or flaccid. Um, oven spring, so how airy or bubbly the, the dough is, whether it's large bubbles, which I see some large bubbles yeah, from some bubbles. For this one. Yeah, we got some See air. this on this side? Pockets, yep. So this one is quite airy, um, and then, or how dense it is. And the last quality is just how did you like it, overall quality. Cool. Okay, so yeah. we'll fill these out for our first taste test. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I like this one. Dough yeah. toughness, what do you think? Tender or more chewy hard? I'd say, well, why don't you go? What do you think? Well, it's not hard. I would, it's got some chew to it. It's got some chew, but not hard. No, I'd not say, I'm going to give it like a six. I was going to say around six or Yeah. Crispness, I mean, it's got it. You can hear it. Can you hear that? Crackle? That's pretty good. I'm gonna give it like a... This one, the bubbles aren't as good. No. It's a little more dense, but it's still and chewy, but it's not like hard. Yeah. Okay. Go toughness. I'm going to an eight. Oven spring, not as airy to me. Dense, so I would yeah. give it a five. Okay. I still enjoy this one. Mm-hmm. A lot. Just because how we put the sauce on reminds me of. Oh, how did you apply your sauce? Did you apply it differently than me? I put try to put it as thin of a layer as mm. possible, mm -hmm. just so it doesn't get too wet. Yeah. And you still have crunch here, but mm -hmm. you got that little bit of sogginess in the middle that you really mm -hmm. enjoy. That like. Yeah, and even does look a little. A good bite. Well, they're both yummy, but mm. if I had to give a scale, <laughs> we'll have to rank it. Okay. Well, we've got a lot more pizza taste testing to do, so yeah. on to our next samples. Okay. Just.
Now it's time for the analysis, but let's go back through our steps for this experiment. Myth or fact, this is what we wanted to look into further, is New York style pizza from New York, can you not mimic it due to its unique uh, mineral content? Our hypothesis was that as we increase mineral content, or when we were looking earlier at the uh, total dissolved solids in each water sample, if it was on the higher end, so higher mineral content, then we suppose that it would have a stronger, chewier crust. And we'll look into our results to see whether or not that was true. The data. So this was when we were using the probe and looking at each of our water samples and what were those total dissolved solids. Um, and I even looked up what is New York City's water content. Mm -hmm. So this one, they said on the average, it's around 65 uh, ppm, so parts per million which is relatively low, yeah, so... considering they don't filter it either. Yeah, so what, it, I mean, I guess you would know maybe a little bit more about yeah, that area from where you're from. It's a very sophisticated way they do it. It's been, you know, they've been working on it for years and it comes from the cat scales starting and they're using oh, gravity nice. for water to drip down. Oh, okay. Um, and it goes through three reservoirs. They use UV lighting to mm -hmm. sterilize, sterilize the water, um, mm -hmm. lightly chlorinated in the very beginning stages. But, you know, one billion gallons of water are used in one day in New York City. Wow. So. It's, but they're really yeah. lucky they have such good water quality. Yeah, yeah. I think Just a lot natural of water, their yeah. source. Absolutely. Maybe better. I think New Yorkers take it for granted too because mm. no one really looks into that actually. So. Yeah, so, it's well. Incredible. Theirs was on the lower end, so if we look at what our water samples were, something comparable, I'd probably say the Dasani is maybe a little closer to that to that realm yep. of, or that uh, area, 65, 46 parts per million. The Aquafina was actually the lowest. And um, do we have the bottle here? Mm -hmm. So it says on the bottle itself, um, purified by reverse osmosis. So, I mean, to me, that's not that surprising that that's, on, that's the lower yeah. end of our TDS content. Um, and then Evian was actually the highest, the highest um, uh, TDS. And then our San Diego tap water, I have two different values here and that's because I took it first straight from the tap. And then I also did measure um, putting it through just like a Brita filter yeah. to see how much does that influence it. And it did drop it down a little bit. So um, yeah, we got to taste all of these different pizzas. So let's look into our results. Yeah. Um, which one we liked the most, which one Absolutely. we liked the least, and whether or not we think it's myth or fact. These are mine, sorry. Let's look at your results. These ones are yours. Yeah. So which pie did you actually like the most on the scale? I would say the second one was my favorite. Okay. I'd say, I think on mine for overall quality that I liked, I liked the first one and I liked number four. So going through which one was which actually, number one was the tap water. Okay. So San Diego tap water, which is a lot higher than the New York's. New York City's yes. water content. Definitely. Um, and I actually didn't like as much, Dasani was number three, so I didn't like that as much as the other ones, which mm. is a lower parts per million. Okay, yeah. Um, so for me, I think maybe the, it also comes into taste. What do you like? What don't you like? Some people like a chewier crust, some people don't. They like it more crisp. So there's some variation there, but... It needs that unique balance of airy, yeah. Chewy, crunchy. Right. It's very hard to replicate. Right. You know? So does it does it mean that one is better than another? I think that's up to the human to decide. But Absolutely. it does seem that there's some some uh, quality behind people saying that this is true, that the water content influences how the dough is is going to rise and and the different qualities of it. Yeah. So yeah. I, that was a cool experiment. Absolutely. Any yeah, any for... excuse to eat pizza all day long, so <laughs> I'm down for that. <laughs> thank you for enjoying, um, inviting me for yeah, this. Yeah, of course. You're welcome in our test kitchen anytime. Yeah. So 
leaving you here. We'll see you next week with another experiment in our test kitchen with the Academy of Edible Sciences and Ethnogastronomy. Check us out on our Instagram. That's ace, A-E-S-E, -E, under slash of, under slash San Diego. And be sure to leave us some comments and say hi. All right. Take care, guys.